Okay, uh, in the last video, we had derived this relationship, and then we were going to use this new property uh, to solve the uh, inverse transform functions that before uh, we would not know how to approach. And we were supposed to solve this problem. Before we do, uh, before we tackle that, let's discuss this relationship a little bit more and make certain we fully understand its implications. So, to begin with, we're saying if we have some function, say f of x, and we know what is corresponding to Laplace transform is, then if we multiply that function by this exponential function, then the Laplace transform of this product, or this new function, we could say, is what it was here, except now it's f of s minus k. So, for example, the cosine of a constant times x, the Laplace transform of that is s divided by, here x multiplied by c, so it would be s squared plus c squared. Now, if I was multiplying this by, say, e to the kx, times the cosine of cx, then the corresponding to Laplace transform would be, here's the k, here's the k, must be f of s minus k, so this would be s minus k divided by s minus k squared plus c squared. So that would be our general Laplace transform for cosimo function times this exponential function. So, for example, if we had the cosine say of 3 times x, then the Laplace transform that would be s divided by s squared plus 9. Now if we had say e to the 5x, no, let's say e to the minus 5x, like this, times the cosine of 3x, then the corresponding Laplace transform, that will be f of s minus k. In this case, k is negative 5. So, up for the, on top of the numerator, it's going to be s minus negative 5, or s plus positive 5, and down in the denominator, it would be s plus 5 squared plus 9. This is it for the cosine of 3x, and this is our f of s function. Now we're multiplying by e to the minus 5x. So in this case, k equals negative 5. So it's going to be the same Laplace transform as it was before, except now it's going to be f of s minus k, or in this case, f of s plus 5. So if this was s, now it's s plus 5. If it was s squared, now the function is s plus 5 squared. Or if we had, for example, say, e to the 2x. Multiplied by the cosine of 3 times x. Then the corresponding Laplace transform would be s, k is now plus 2, so k is plus 2, so now it's going to be f of s minus 2. So up here, instead of having s, it's going to be s minus 2, and then in the denominator, instead of s squared, it's going to be s 
minus 2 quantity squared plus 9. Let's take some more examples to make certain that we're really comfortable with this, with this concept and how it applies. So we'll make some room here. Here's what we previously derived in the uh, last video. Uh, let's see. The sine of C times X, its corresponding Laplace transform is C divided by S squared plus C squared. Now let's say we had, for example, e to the 7x. Times, well, let's just take a specific example first. Suppose we have the sine of 4x. Put some numbers in here. So if we had, say, the sine of 4 times x, the corresponding Laplace transform would be 4 divided by s squared plus 16. Now if we had, for example, e to the 9 times x times the sine of 4x, now the corresponding Laplace transform is, this stays the same of course because there's no s function uh, in the numerator, that only occurs when we're dealing with cosines, so that's the same. But now, x is 9, and it's f to the s minus 9 in this case, so instead of s squared, it would be s minus 9 quantity squared plus 16. Um, let's take another example. Suppose we have x to the n. Its corresponding Laplace transform is n factorial divided by s to the n plus 1. Now if we multiply this, say, by e to the kx times x to the n. Now it's going to be, this stays the same, n factorial, only down here it's going to be s minus k to the n plus 1 power. So, for example, if we had, say, x cubed, this corresponding to Laplace transform, that would be 3 factorial divided by s to the 4th power. But now if we had, say, e to the 7x, times x cubed. Now its corresponding Laplace transform would be e factorial divided by s minus 7 to the fourth power. And again, all of this is in keeping with our relationship here. Okay, if you have a function f of x and you know it's corresponding to Laplace transform. If I multiply that function by e to the kx, now the Laplace transform of this product is what it was before, except it's f of s minus k. So those are just some examples there of how that rule applies. Now, what we did during the last video.
was we started at this side of the relation and worked to this side. In other words, you were saying, well, let's imagine it like this. The inverse of Foss transform of f of s that's going to correspond to some function f of x. And we're writing the arrow like this to indicate that this is a Laplace transform pivot. Here we have a function f of s. We take its inverse Laplace transform, we get f of x. And for f of x, L, f of s is its Laplace transform. Now, you think of it like this, the inverse Laplace transform of this minus some constant and we could say that would correspond to then e to the kx times my original function f of x or if I want I can write it as a formal equation I can say that if I write this as a formal equation I can write this as a formal equation. Based upon our relationship here, that's fine. Except what is f of x? It's this. So we can write it like this. This is equal to e to the kx times f of x, but f of x is this. And when we're going to find the inverse of Laplace transforms of different types of function, it's this equation here that we put to use. That's why we took some time in driving it and discussing it in the past video. That's why we're doing it again at the end of this video um, after we had a bit of a more workout as to exactly what this relationship implies for different types of functions. Now, this is what we'll use then when we wanted to determine the inverse Laplace transforms of more complicated functions, such as, say, 15 divided by s squared plus 4s plus 13. So we probably won't have time to learn this video, so come back for the next video and definitely we'll tackle this problem and then we'll try to include several other examples where we use this relationship to find inverse Laplace transforms of different types of functions that here to four we would not have been able to take the inverse uh, the plus transform of. And we'll try to have several examples so you can get comfortable in using this. But it's a very handy relationship, and it's used a lot in solving uh, uh, differential equations with the Laplace transform method.